How are you? I'm okay, but I hear I, I hear I hear a certain kitty is not. She's okay now. She had a tough day. She had to go to the vet. Oh dear. She doesn't, she doesn't like the vet at all. Because what cat does like the vet, but also because Miracle really hates dogs. Like more than most cats hate dogs. Like she really hates dogs. Well, she can't hear them coming. So yeah, I would expect that's probably like, you know. And Dan's mom, who is her original owner, has two beagles now. So whenever they go to visit and he brings Miracle, the beagles are like all over. And she's Hi! Like, oh, Hi! How are you? I like you. You yeah. could be my friend. And she's like, <laughs> she does not like it. She does not want to be their friend. So we sat there and the vet's office was like super busy today because they had emergencies and they had one poor dog that was in surgery for the whole Aww. day and it was just madness. So we waited like 30 to 40 minutes to be seen and the whole time she's fucking howling like I'm skinning her. Like, thank God there was a window on the room so they could tell that I wasn't abusing this cat. <laughs> but every time someone walked by the window, she'd be like, Row! like, save me. What are... I want to touch my ears. <laughs> so, we had a very nice vet who calmed her down and cleaned her ears and gave us eardrops. And she's had some treats and now she's sleeping. So what exactly was causing the problem? She gets a lot of ear infections. I mean, oh. she's our little special needs baby. She has all kinds of health problems. Um, like she is part of her upper palate missing and you know but uh so, so she just had a really nasty ear infection like i woke up the other morning and i'm like oh my god the cat's ears stink and like her fur was all sticky from goo dripping Aww. out of them so i'm like yeah we gotta go to the vet something's like something's alive in there so she's probably just sitting in the, in the waiting room going hey hey this ain't right yo yeah help i don't need will you help me Please help me. So she, she so and it's so, not it's not that she could hear the dogs. She could just she probably smell them. <laughs> so she was sniffing every corner of the little exam room compulsively, like I can smell a dog. I can smell a dog. So like dog. So this poor cat, all she knew was my ears hurt. Where are we going? Oh <laughs> God, no! Why am I trapped in this box with dogs? They're waiting yeah. for me. They're going to get me. What the are you doing? Time, the last time I had to take her to the vet, the second I put her carrier down so I could sign in, a collie like came bounding up to the carrier. Hi, I like you. You want to be my friend? She's like, no, I don't. Fuck you. So, yeah, she's she's a little better now. She'll get better. You know, it happens. But she had a tough day. Well, she was a little mad at me when we got home. I tried to give her a treat and she was like, no, fuck you. I want your treat. You can't buy my love. You took yeah, me to the dog she, place. She's mad when she won't take treats. Aww. Like, she will always take treats. If she's real mad, she's like, nope. I hate you, no, smelly. solution for you, human. I hate you, smelly monkey person. Well, this, well, we have reasons for us to be sad now. So that, that's good. Uh, let me get our intro going. Each week, Catherine and the Radio Dead Air audience find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it on back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And we're starting this week. I don't think we have to pay too much attention to this one. Just, just, just a nod to this. So everyone's prepared. Let, let, let's consider this one a public service announcement, shall we? Okay. Yeah. Um, just make sure you're ready in September because some important stuff is going to happen. We're going to have an apocalypse again. Oh, good. Uh, apparently... So it, quit job, then. Yeah, a, 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 conspiracy theory websites and blogs have intensified the mass hysteria, inducing message that global civilization... Will witness, a, will witness a major climate catastrophe sometime between September 22nd and 28th. They're not entirely sure wait, when's. Wait. Hang on, Dan. When is Vegas? Do you know the dates in September? Like early September. Oh. I want to say September 9th. All right, never mind. Because you know that gaming club, yeah. of which we have both been members, 
is having their big global convention at the Palms in Vegas in September. Mm -hmm. So yeah, well, there you go. You can all prepare for that. You know, you can that have your last be, hurrah. That well, that could, I'm saying that could be the catalyzing event. <clears throat> that um, could be the thing that makes God just go, you know what? Fuck you. I, I, lo I love how they say it's between September 22nd and 28th. We're not entirely sure, but it's going to be that week. So, you know, make your plans. Plan accordingly. Now, of course, NASA. You make the world's going to end. What plans are there to make? Um, who are you going to be fucking when the world ends? Fair. Okay. I was thinking like arrangements. And I'm like, you ain't getting no funeral. Who's going to throw it? You know, what are you going to drink? Who's going to be catering? You know, lots of stuff. What, to. What are we going to do with Miracle? She'll probably survive. <laughs> She'll be sitting on top of the rubble like, where's my food? Now, do, do you remember the last time we had an apocalypse? What was it? 2012, I think. Well, we were supposed to get Ragnarok this past February. We were? I didn't, I missed that. Yeah, no, we were supposed to get like Aww. Nordic fucking Ragnarok this past February. They I like missed did that. the calculation. Some, some like Nordic scientists sat down and did the math and figure out that this past February should be Ragnarok. And But didn't we have that, what was that guy's name? I don't know what it was, but he claimed the world, it, it was 2011 or 2012, something like that. I think it was 2011. Well, us in 2012. Well, 2011, I think there was one where the rapture was going to happen. And the rapture is going to happen every six months. And then the rapture didn't happen. So he said, no, no, wait, I was off by a few months. That's right. That asshole. And then the rapture didn't happen again. Yeah. And then he really the Large and, Hadron Collider is going to get us like any day. And then then I love how he retconned it. He said, well, wait, the rapture did happen. You just didn't notice or something. Because there are so few true believers. Yeah. In the world. Yeah. And the irony is he didn't get raptured. He didn't get raptured. No. So. I'm going to suck for him. Of course, NASA has said there's no asteroid. There's no comet. What's wrong with you? Well, you that's idiots. what NASA would say. Of course. That's, you know, well, what would NASA say? But the thing is, if you think about it, that is what NASA would say. Because do they want six months of worldwide panic and looting and disaster like think about what would happen if everyone in the world knew that the world was going to end on a specific date think about what life would become it would be fucking mad max out there so the 4chan would leave the internet is what you're saying yes it'd be goddamn pandemonium so i think they actually would lie <laughs> you'd be like no nope, everything's cool nothing to see here and then we'd all just go up in flames because We're good. Otherwise, it would be well. Awesome. Well, okay. So I guess just in case, yeah. But no, the fucking world isn't going to end. This always fucking happens. Fucking no, no, the world's going to end. Yeah. Except one of these times, it will. I don't think this one is though, because it started on the internet. I have a legit like phobia of the apocalypse. <laughs> I do. I, really I think do. everybody kind of has a phobia. No, but like it keeps me up at night. Like I lay awake at night wondering if the world's going to end while I'm alive and what it's going to be like and if I'm going to hell. And like these are things that keep me up at night. And when I was in high school, I was on the school newspaper and this kid wrote a fucking feature story about the teachings of Nostradamus and I had to proof it and I didn't sleep for a week. I think we'll be okay. Just saying. Okay, well, we'll see what the show is like the week after that. Because people might be getting into some crazy shit. YOLO! All right, our next one, of course. Hey, we have video. Oh, Tara, oh, thank you. I hope so. But I mean, I do this, so how good are my chances? <laughs> our next one, we start off, we have video, and it's Florida. So. Oh, boy. Everyone, take a look. I, I could retitle the show, Hey Everyone, Look at This Asshole. This is coming to us from Florida. You watch here. Th that is a police vehicle. The sheriff vehicle there. And you're about to see in a minute, this gentleman comes up and then begins to dance on the police car. Florida man dances on cop car to ward off vampires. 
like you do. Thorn. I mean, everybody knows it's garlic, mm. crucifixes, silver, idiot dancing on a police car. Florida authorities say a man was arrested for dancing on top of a law enforcement SUV because the man said he was dancing to keep vampires away. As the man was dancing, the songs Rich Girl by Hall and Oates and Goodbye Stranger by Supertramp played on his car radio. Uh, while it's not clear if the man's plan to ward off vampires worked, he did damage the vehicle's roof and windshield wipers. Here's the thing. Deputies say the man was not drunk or on drugs and has not been diagnosed with any mental health issues. So, I guess... Is Trooper making a comeback that I don't know about? <laughs> Is this viral marketing? <laughs> the Louisiana crazy time vampire lesbian titty show? Because well, no. that was basically the whole crux of that show was like Bayou Rednecks and Vampires, right? Yeah, man, he is just killing it up there. Fairies and werewolves, oh my. He just, he does, he does not, he, he does not give a shit. Look at him. I didn't know that dancing on a car could ward off a vampire. Particularly to Hall and Oates. I wouldn't expect Hall and Oates to be. They seem oh, so oh, he's, he's, he's striking the Tebow. He, he's he's striking a Tebow, so. Oh, he's twerking. He, he also, yeah, there is twerking involved. I just I, this is kind of over to watch a man twerk. <laughs> Dan is like, oh, I gotta see this shit. Get your face on the shot right now. It's just like your left nipple. It's a little weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, that would get rid of vampires. <laughs> allow me to sh allow me to show you the dance of my people. <laughs> it is the forbidden dance. I th this I think if you rule out drugs and you rule out mental illness, all that's left is Christ, what an asshole! I mean, was anybody in that house attacked by vampires that day? No, Tara. No, they weren't. Well, <laughs> I knew that was fucking coming. I knew. You set me up. I knew it was fucking coming. And yet, I let it happen. He, he goes at this for like a long time. He's still going. It's, why the f He was arrested for disturbing the peace and criminal mischief. Why? This, this fucking white boy. This is, I think this, this, this sums up Florida pretty much in a nutshell. Maybe it's like, did you see the musical episode of Buffy? Yes. Where the whole town was cursed by a music demon? Yes. Maybe just this guy pissed off the music demon. <laughs> yeah, I'm, fuck you. You got no rhythm. You got no... <laughs> Just bouncing up and down on the fucking thing. Ain't a fucking care in the world. But I repeat, nobody in that house was attacked by vampires that day. Maybe he was on to something. Maybe we all need to go out at dusk every night. Dance on a cop car. car. And, and that'll keep the vampires away. A twerk a day. Uh, away. We have more. Oh, we have some more. Oh shit! Say okay. We we we've had a series on the show about uh, unintentional series about teachers getting a little too too involved in the sexual education of their their students. Not in the approved curricula. Yeah. Not in way, not even that that you know. It's I'm not, not a subject that should have a lab practical. Yeah. Um. Well, we have yet another one, and you know I kind of get where they're going from. Their heart was in the right place. I don't know where the brain was. On the other hand, let me get you the link here. But I think we can guess where all the blood was going. Yeah, probably. Um, let's see here. <sighs> Dad files police report after school trip to Smitten Kitten sex toy store. 
Minneapolis. Who names a sex toy store that? That's so cutesy. <laughs> School field trip to the smitten kitten adult toy stores raising some eyebrows and may soon involve the Minneapolis Police Department. School leaders at the Gaia Democratic School in Minneapolis still fully support the trip to the smitten kitten in Uptown, a self-proclaimed progressive sex toy store for everyone. Support isn't sitting too well with Lloyd with Lynn Floyd, who at the time of the trip was sending his three kids to the school. He was so upset after learning two of his daughters, aged 11 and 13, were on that Dude. field trip. He pulled all three from the school. I, okay, I get where they were going. They were trying to show, you know, the sex positive... You know, you, you can be okay with your body. This is a natural part of sexuality. It's cool. Yeah, but... 11? And 13. To the sex toy store. Where? Where they might encounter some things they might not understand. And might not necessarily be ready to understand. Remember, I went, I went to one of the largest fetish shops in New York City many, many years ago with a friend of mine. And we wound up in this corner. His girlfriend was trying on shoes. We wound up in this corner. One wall was all shoes. And she tried to stand up in the shoes she was trying on. And the saleswoman kind of yelled at her and was like, no, those aren't meant to bear weight. They're just for show. And one wall was all shoes that were not meant to bear weight. They were just meant to be in the air. And then the wall in front of us was all very, very large diapers. And then this wall was all like $500 corsets. So I'm kind of wandering away to look at the $500 corsets because they're really pretty. And this little Austrian man comes up and he's like, would you like me to strap you into one of those? And I'm like, oh, honey, I don't think I can afford that. <laughs> I'm like, I can actually even afford to look at them, but thank you. And there was this couple. This little tiny chick and her big, big boyfriend, and they're looking through the corsets. And she picks one up and asks her boyfriend what he thinks of it. He says, well, I think that's a little bit big for you, honey. And she goes, oh, it's not for me. And I was like, that's my cue to leave. Yeah, because... Like, fuck out of this conversation. So there are some things that 11-year-olds might not be quite... They, it, it might be a little advanced for them. Do you remember a while back there was that picture from that list of, of very unsettling dildos? The cannon. That you big. Have to narrow it, down <laughs> it was oh, about yes. it was about this big around yeah. and this tall and it had little yeah. cannon wheels drawn on the balls. Yeah. You're when you're eleven! Teacher, can I take this cool pink sword home? It's not a sword to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that in the channel. Uh, uh, Mabufu. Mommy, did you know you could fit a baseball bat up your hoo-ha? Yes, I did. <laughs> Lurky doesn't know. Ooh, leather pants! I could be a cowboy! <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like... That's great that you're trying to be sex positive with these kids right. and help them out. But there are some things that they, you know what? You got to crawl before you can walk. And also the parents were not entirely clear on what would be happening here. Like, you should get them past the dry humping stage before you're dealing with like saddles and wax. <laughs> and the crushing of mice. Like... This is one of those things where if you want to do this, you have got to call or sit down with every parent involved and go, look, here's what we're going to do. Here's where we're going. Are you cool with this? Yeah. Because some of them might not be, especially for their 11-year-old. Now, I understand even at 11, you might want to associate with them. Look, look this is your body. This is what's going to happen. This is how it works. Just so you're cool. Because that's kind of a health thing in some areas, you know? Are you okay over there? <laughs> I remember there was a bit on Orange, in the New Orange is the New Black that's gotten talked about a lot. About how women don't understand how, 
about their vagina. The transgender woman was explaining their own genitalia to them. They didn't yeah. know how it worked. And they're they like, they peed out of their vagina. Yeah. And you no, know, we don't. You don't. There's, there's another hole. It's, it's not that. Oh God. Yeah. So yeah, for some reason, so you need to teach them this stuff just for basic health reasons to understand this is your body. You're stuck with it your whole life. You might as well know how shit's going to work. But there's a little, this is a little past that. There's like, you know, this is what you might need to know if you have a yeast infection. And this is what you might need to know to fit a cannon up your bajingo. <laughs> Lou. <laughs> that there are two completely different branches there, you know? Like, I don't, I'm pretty sure sex ed when I was a kid didn't involve learning about safe words. <laughs> This is just, I mean, yeah, your heart's in the right place, but you want to really be a little more. And think about like, all right, imagine you just go to the sex toy store to replace your vibrator because you ran the batteries out or your cannon because it got stuck up your ex's ass or whatever. And, and suddenly... 30, 12 year old. <laughs> and you're like trying to hold something in front of your face. You're and like, uh, hey, it's Mr. Johnson. I know you from church. <laughs> Ice cream man. <laughs> yeah, that's a little no. Yeah, this was uh, not the best idea. Speaking of not the best idea, have you ever been fired before? I have. I have too. There are two ways to handle a firing. With dignity and poise, you shake their hand, you say thank you for the opportunity, you walk out with your head held high, and then... I got fired from a job on inventory day. I was like, so I'm not doing inventory? I Thanks! I peace out. There's that. And then there's trying to burn the place down as you go. KFC employees set trees on fire after believing he was getting fired. After not even knowing? Not even knowing. Grand I'm sure as fuck getting fired now. <laughs> Grand Traverse, Colorado. 28-year-old Kentucky Fried Chicken employee facing charges after allegedly setting trees on fire behind the fast food restaurant because he thought he was getting fired. Grand Traverse County Sheriff's deputies say the disgruntled KFC employee was asked to leave the restaurant after arriving at work. Deputies tell us the female manager asked the employee to leave due to employee-related issues and for causing a disturbance. Deputies say the employee believed he was being fired. After speaking to his manager around 11 a.m., the suspect allegedly set fire to several trees behind the restaurant, and then left the property. He then, he returned at 1.30, where he allegedly pushed the manager. He then went to his debt manager's unlocked vehicle in the parking lot and took some items. A sp suspect later found walking around the area, was arrested on charge of all arson, breaking and entering into vehicles, as well as assault. So. so he thought he might be getting fired and just figured, I better make goddamn sure. <laughs> I guess. Well, if I'm gonna go, I might as well make it worth it. And that's fine, but wait until you already have been fired to cause your mayhem. Because you might not get fired. Yeah. You might not. You might be able to salvage something. Or you might be able to go, you know what? Maybe I should just quit. Which might right. be better for your resume. Hey, you never know. Yeah. But no, no. Gotta go out by setting the tree. What did the trees ever do to you? I know. That's kind of dickish. Trees weren't going to fire you. I'm a... Fuck. They I'm just a... wanted to make oxygen. Photosynthesize. I'm just... I'm trying to find... Follow the chain of logic here. He's like, well, if I'm fired, fuck those trees then. Where did we get... The, what happened? Well, it's like... What's his name from Off in Space? Well, okay, but... I'm going to set the building, building on fire. fire. <laughs> Except he didn't. He set the trees on fire. But eventually, if it didn't get put out, it would reach the building. Probably not, because there's there's usually a parking lot. There's gravel. There's, like, asphalt. It's not getting to the building. True. 
It would have to go the long way around. Uh. Through the minds of Moria? So, you just had issues with Miracle, and she didn't take it well. To be fair, she's kind of a drama queen. <laughs> I've got one that can top her. Um, you didn't have to call the police on your cat. No. Stanford man calls 911 after three hours standoff with his cat. Stanford man called police recently after he was unable to enter his home. His cat had a baby the night before and got extremely aggressive and tried to hurt him. My cat was getting too aggressive and I was inside and then he attacked me. He scratched at me in my leg and tried to bite me. So me and my wife, we come outside and now we cannot go in the home for like three to four hours. Dispatcher was a bit confused on why the man was calling the police. Quote, so you want the police to come and remove the cat? Yes, that was exactly what the man wanted. They can't arrest your cat. <laughs> Her little paws are not going to fit in the cuffs. No, that does not sound like something Bridget would do. Bridget was a very sweet, well, I'm sure she still is a very sweet kitty. She was not at all aggressive, even when my nine-year-old locked her in boxes and threw pillows at her. <laughs> left out a very important word there. Sagya says, cat got your house? <laughs> this has happened before. Like, I remember seeing stories like this that, like, <laughs> people's cats have held them hostage. Like, they can't get out of a room. And I'm like, it's a cat. Like, how big? Like, even a Maine Coon, I mean, a Maine Coon could probably fuck you up because they're pretty big, but assuming it's not some mammoth fucking cat, like, pick it up, like, put it in a room, close the door. The Baz says, help, my pussy is out of control. <laughs> Sorry. It's awful, but it's funny. And really, Miracle could never, Miracle weighs six pounds. This cat was seven. This was a 7.5 pound cat. A seven pound cat? <laughs> a seven pound cat holding you hostage anywhere. Like, Miracle tries. She'll, like, stand in the doorway and be like, no, you shall not pass. And we're like, that's adorable. You weigh six pounds. We're going to pick you up and move you. And she gets very haughty about it. But it's like, we're bigger than you are. I mean, I would have gotten creative with this shit. I would have gone down to the Pet Smart and, like, gotten a handful of, of like, you know, uh, catnip toys and maybe a laser pointer and been like, okay, let's work this out. Like throw right, the something like, <clears throat> and maybe she was just protecting her young, but you don't need to, you don't need to get the police involved. It's a cat. <laughs> I mean, you gotta think the dispatcher is there running through her head going, what the fuck am I supposed to do about this? Who do I even send? Who do I, what? I don't, who's, do we I have guess, a department for this shit? I guess you could call animal control, but then they're going to take your cat away and they're not going to give her back. Well, the police showed up. And we're like, what, do you want us to shoot your cat? What, what <laughs> we cannot arrest your cat. She's not going to understand the Miranda rights. There's no meow Miranda rights. No, no, she's a bad kitty. She needs to learn her lesson. You can't do this. I'm trying to teach her values. <laughs> Seven point five pounds. Seven pound cat, dude. Like, now was it the cat from Pet Cemetery? Because then I kind of understand, but you know. I mean, unless that cat had some fucking laser eyes or something, you're you're probably you could probably handle that. Well, Fuck. Worst case scenario, like, it's not the nicest thing to do, but put a laundry basket over That's her. true, yeah. It's like, okay. It's not a very big cat. Just put your laundry basket over the cat. <laughs> she, she'll probably still be able to run around, but she won't be able to scratch you. Uh, all right. She won't enjoy it. Obviously, I am a big proponent of uh, do-it-yourself 
sort of stuff. I mean, look what I do. This is for a living. I do shit myself. You built a special wall just to bash your head against. I did. Um, and I appreciate that aesthetic, but, um, I, I, I don't approve of when DIY intersects with DUI. Man ran fake DUI checkpoint while drunk. Somerset, Pennsylvania. Police say a man who had set up a drunken drive-in checkpoint complete with road flares while pretending to be a Pennsylvania state trooper was drunk. Trooper say 19 year old. Hiding in plain sight. <laughs> They'll never know. It's the perfect crime. It's the last place they'd think to look. Trooper say 19 year old Logan Shawless of Somerset parked his vehicle diagonally across State Road 601 and set up road flares about 4 a.m. Saturday. Motorists who stopped say Shawless claimed he was a trooper and demanded to see license, registration, insurance papers. This is the best part. When real troopers arrived, police say Shawless tried to hand a BB pistol to the car's passenger and said, I can't get caught with this. Did he have a uniform or <laughs> a special car? <laughs> Was he just a dude in fucking like pajama pants and a hoodie going, let me see your ID? Because Governor, no. Governor Explosion in the channel says, I'm not drunk. Everyone else is drunk. I'm fine. I'm not a... saying that an Irishman is never drunk so long as he can hold on to a blade of grass to prevent himself from falling, falling off, off the, the face of the earth. Yeah. <laughs> Monkey shines. Have you been drinking this evening? Me, me too. <laughs> <laughs> you got any more? <laughs> Here, hold this. Oh, shit. Just hold, no, just hold this, please. It's cool. Okay, I need you. I need you to walk this line. Wow, you make that look really easy. I know. I, I, I have a friend who used to live in Northern Ireland. He was born there. He's, well, he moved to the States and then he moved back overseas. But... Growing up in Northern Ireland, he and his friends used to put on fake armor and get toy guns and do, like, checkpoints. Northern Ireland, at that point, was a war zone. And I'm like, w were you trying to get killed? He's like, oh, we seemed, we thought it'd be fun. And I'm like... How is that fun? Fascinating British soldiers doing checkpoints. How the fuck? Blown the fuck up. I know that is they. they have, Irish people don't fuck around, man. I'm I'm trying to. I I don't understand what chain of events led him to go. Hey, hey, and he was by himself, which is even better. So he was talking to himself at the time, going, "Hey, you know what'd be awesome, <laughs> oh, dude? I have the best idea. No, dude, shut up. Let me talk. <laughs> shut up." I've got so the like best idea. we're doing just before we went on the air? Yes. Shut up, let me talk. I got the best idea. This would be awesome. It would be so much fun. I'm going to do it. I'm going I'm, I'm to be officer of the law. <laughs> what could go Can wrong? <laughs> I just... It... <laughs> And to do it while drunk is even... Yeah. Um, I mean, who would do it sober? <laughs> this is almost... How forward would you have to be? If if this was... You know, this is almost performance art. I think this is accidentally performance art. Maybe it's just Lady Gaga's next video. <laughs> He's trying to say... He actually kind of try, made an artistic statement here without meaning to. It's like avant-garde. Only oh stupid! This is yeah. this is the embodiment of that that's thousand... Not, that's not what idiot savant means. This is the embodiment of that thousand monkeys typing for a thousand years. Only drunk. Only he typed out Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, I... She's, re- she's writing another one from his point of view. She's rewriting the whole same story from the dude's point of view. Because apparently she needs a second house or something. I don't... That's happening. She could probably buy and sell us both three or four times over. So speaking of things that make you want to throw up... <laughs> Guys, I'm going to warn you before we get to this next story. Uh Uh-oh. This is awful. This is absolutely awful. If you're eating or drinking something, you may want to set it aside or pause and come back and watch the recorded bit later. Because this is kind of nasty. And this is also no one in this story is a good guy. There are no heroes. Everyone is an asshole. This is this is a flat, flat up, straight up and down. Everyone is an asshole. Oh, I've got Tara's like. Asshole. Tara's like, I got it. I got to know. You're like, tell me more. And one more time. This is your last warning. This is just you have been warned. I'm not I'm not kidding. I sent this to you. You did. You have all been warned. Smelly Justice. (laughs) Alleged masturbator trapped in overturned porta potty. Actual quote from the police. Physically, he's fine, but he had a crappy day. That is a quote. That is a quote from the actual fucking police. And, and of course it is because... Being it, able to say that, you know being able to say that made that whole cop's whole fucking week. Well, of course it is because it's from Portland. Fucking Portland. <clears throat> Was there a bird on the porta potty? Police in Oregon said a homeless man allegedly masturbating in a public toilet with the door open had to be rescued... After witnesses reached their tipping point. Motherfucker. Who wrote that? (laughs) Who wrote this? Ben Hooper. Shame on you. Shame on you. You go to your room. They literally did reach their tipping point. He's not wrong. Police said the 48... They reached the point where they started tipping. Police said the 48-year-old man was freed from the overturned portable overturned portable toilet Thursday morning after witnesses said they became fed up with the man opening the door and flashing his genitals while pleasuring himself. He was flashing us over and over again, and we asked him multiple times and told him to stop, but he wouldn't. Our friend thought it'd be funny to get up and jump behind the porta potty and kick it. Police say the man, who was trapped when the commode tipped over door side down, was covered in feces after his rescue. They say the man was not arrested or cited. No one wanted to put him in a patrol car. So everyone here involved in this story, including the police, because that fucking quote was an asshole. Yeah. I want to know, how do you even get it up in a porta potty? Yeah, really? That is like one of the least sexy places on the face like, of I'm this earth. Like, I'm pretty sure there's a level of hell that's just rows and rows of endless porta potties. Yeah, it's like, it, that is like the anti erection. That is yeah. nothing, what, nothing good, nothing. I've heard of people having sex in porta potties, and I'm like, oh. No. Good God, what is wrong with you? But still, just first off, jacking it in the porta potty, you know, okay, if you keep the door closed and nobody knows, that's between you and God. I mean, he was homeless. Homeless people have a right to double click yeah. their mouths as much as anybody else. And if that's the only private place there is, and that's the only private place there is, but it's not private anymore. If you're like, hey, look at what I'm doing. Right. Please stop that. No. Look at my penis. That's asshole number one. Yeah. We don't want to look at your penis. 
Now, asshole number two are the people who just didn't, like, please stop doing that. No. Leave and call the police, because what he's doing is not legal. The police would have come and made him stop and possibly arrested him at that point because that's public indecency. You're not allowed to show strangers your penis. I'm sorry, you may believe otherwise, but you are not allowed to just randomly show strangers your penis without permission. No. It's not. not. It's not. That's bad etiquette. Miss you wouldn't Man know that from watching this show, <laughs> but that's actually not a thing that's okay to do. Yeah. But instead of calling the police, instead of removing themselves from the situation and calling the police, they kick the porta potty over. And here's the thing. It doesn't say that any of those people were arrested either. No, and they should have been. And isn't that assault? Yes, because God, oh my, I'm trying to think of the biological nightmare soup that oh, was yeah. happening in there. This guy could have come out transformed into a shit monster. He could have come out a superhero, the Toxic Avenger. Or found whole new diseases. Yeah. You don't know. You could have started the zombie ap apocalypse with that shit. The zombie Literally. apocalypse. Apocalypse. The zombie apocalypse. Uh. Well, we'll see where this gentleman is in September, won't we? <laughs> And yeah, and finally the police, they don't arrest anybody and they laugh about it. Yeah, they just kind of wander off laughing like, oh, those poor people and their wacky hijinks. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, Portland. <laughs> this entire story, Portland. I mean, Christ, if they'd arrested this guy, at least he could have gotten a shower. Yeah. Because yeah. if he's homeless, he might be stuck like that for a while. <sighs> I, I love, they, they say, fortunately for him, he had some clothing he changed into and cleaned himself up later on. It worked out okay. That's a oh, quote. It's fine. That's a There's quote. Biohazard at risk here. Like, if you work retail and somebody's kid pees on the floor. I don't know if you know this, most larger retail establishments have a fucking biohazard kit in case some kid vomits on the floor or pees on the floor or whatever. You don't just get the mop. There's a fucking biohazard kit because that's somebody's bodily fluids and you're not supposed to really touch them. But no, the cops no, just like, just, oh. Just, I walk around covered in the shit soup of a hundred strangers. And yeah, these people knock it over. Oh, you kids. Oh, you, you wacky kids. <sighs> so I think- Oh, now, this is why we can't have nice things. Think no, we can't have nice things because we're homeless. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm picturing in my head the, the hell that must have been. Ah, uh ah. -huh. So I, th I think the first thing we learned is Portland's full of assholes. There's a pun in there somewhere that I don't want to make. Go ahead. And if you're not careful, you could wind up covered in what comes out of them. It wasn't strong. It wasn't strong. It's not my best work. We learned that... Do it yourself and DUI. No, D Y I D U I. Different, <laughs> that 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 center letter is crucial. Yeah, yeah. You're not gonna find that shit on Pinterest. <sighs> How to, maybe you will though. How to set up your own D D uh, DUI checkpoint for really concerned suburban moms who have nothing better to do. We've learned if your cat is being unruly, get a laundry basket. It's a cat. Get a laundry basket. Get, like, a laser a pointer. A string. A, cat, a laser pointer. There are so many routes you could go without swatting your cat. <laughs> <laughs> That's 
That's what he did. That's what the fuck he did. He swatted his cat. Uh. Because he claimed there was a hostage situation. <laughs> I'm being held, kept out of... He had a three-hour standoff with a cat. I have a three-hour standoff with Miracle every morning, but that's because she doesn't want me to get out of bed. And I'm a sucker. And so she curls up and goes to sleep on my chest. And I'm like, well, I guess I'll just sit in bed and play with my phone because the cat's happy. We've learned if you've been fired, that doesn't mean arson needs to be involved. Especially if you haven't even been fired yet. At least wait to really be fired. Yeah, fired and fired, those same word, different meanings. Yeah, the English language <laughs> is tricky. It is, it is. We've learned that sex education is good. Yes, it's important. Yes, the form it takes, however, is crucial. Yeah. And, you know, if you wanted to do this, there are like those people, they do them like Avon parties now. They right. do like sex toy parties in the home. You could have called. You could really tailor it. Like you could bring in the sex toy lady and tailor it to that audience and really make it work. You don't just bring them to the set. You don't take them. To, bring, don't take the kids to the sex store because the kids going to find the inflatable sheep with the insertion hole and get very confused. I got it. Can I buy this pool toy? <laughs> I didn't know sheep could swim. <laughs> we like, so many questions you are not prepared to answer. We've learned that dancing on a cop car will ward off vampires. Who knew? Hey, the this is this is a, a, an experiment you can replicate. Dance Sunday, on your. Michael Jackson's Thriller video seems very different. 